Prologue Tumbleweed, Texas, Saturday, May 17th, 2008 It was a dark and stormy night. Well, maybe it wasn't so much stormy as it was dark. And it wasn't really that dark either because the light of the full moon illuminated the small west Texas town and the surrounding badlands. But a coyote was howling at the full moon somewhere if that helped set the creepy tone any better. A single blue car whizzed westward on U.S. Highway 90 past a road sign that read, Welcome to wonderful Tumbleweed, Texas, home of the one and only Freddie Johnson. Population, 5,000. Filbert Ferrari, an unshaven, bitter husk of a salesman, had been driving all day. His recent reassignment from his comfortable cubicle in New York City to be the Greater West Texas Regional Sales Manager for Toasters Incorporated had taken its toll on him. He had been in Texas for a grand total of two weeks, and he hated it. He hated the accents. He hated the cowboy hats. He hated the food. He hated everything about the Lone Star State. He especially hated that today he had to wake up early, leave his new apartment in San Antonio, get into his corporate car, and drive across Texas, stopping at every podunk cow town along the way to prospect for potential customers. It hadn't been a successful trip. Tumbleweed was his final stop, and he was so happy to finally be getting out of that car and into a bed. He had thought that San Antonio was bad, but conversing with people who lived out in the West Texas wilderness was enough to make him not complain about the city for at least a couple of weeks. He pulled into the only hotel in town. It was a flickery light type of place with litter all over the parking lot. He stepped out of the car and took in the sights, only to discover that there wasn't much to look at. Tumbleweed looked like a creepy old ghost town where people just happened to live. There was one nice-looking mansion at the end of what he guessed was Main Street, but other than that, the place was a total dive. Wild coyotes ran through the streets, and it had a strange smell about it. It smelled like... death. What a dump, Filbert mumbled as he closed the driver's door. He retrieved his travel bag and walked inside. An elderly receptionist was reading a grocery store tabloid and smoking a cigarette, oblivious to Filbert's presence. "'Excuse me,' he said, a hint of disdain in his voice. The old lady looked up and gave Filbert a look that seemed to say, "'Why are you talking to me? I'd like a room.' The attendant closed her magazine and stabbed her cigarette out on the bare counter. "'How many?' she asked. One. He handed her his corporate credit card and she began to process his request. She was using ancient machinery behind the counter, so Filbert tried to fill in the awkward silence with a sales pitch. You wouldn't by any chance be in the market for a brand new toaster, would you? Nothing. The attendant continued to give him the icy stare as she lit up another cigarette and let it dangle from her lip. I represent the Greater West Texas Region for Toasters Incorporated. He placed his business card on the counter. Just give me a ring and I'll hook you right up. We manufacture top-quality toasters and sell them directly to the customer. We cut out the middleman and pass the savings directly on to you. The dot matrix printer loudly printing his invoice interrupted his memorized sales pitch. The attendant swung around and tore the paper off the printer, swung back around, wiped the ashes from her first cigarette onto Filbert's shoes, and put the paper on the counter. Breakfast is here in the lobby from 5.30 till 10. You can check out of your room any time before 11. Sign at the bottom, please, she said almost robotically. Filbert sighed and signed as he was instructed. The attendant handed him a set of brass keys. They still make these, he thought. Room 101, thank you and have a pleasant stay here in Tumbleweed. Filbert nodded, but he really wanted to give her the finger. He walked down the hall to room 101, fumbled with the keys for a few seconds, and opened the door up to some less-than-inviting accommodations. The room was too small, the bed was poorly made, and the TV set was obviously broken. Nevertheless, Filbert closed the door behind him, tossed his bag on the bed, and changed into his pajamas. The Lurker Little did he know he was being watched as he changed— Disgusting as that thought might be, the creature was hunting, and the hotel was his favorite place.